Hello, it's time for another Bhagavad Gita video. Our last video was, um, it finished with chapter 6, verse 28 of the Gita. And um, it, had, it had been a video where it was describing the technique of dhyana meditation, which is a technique of, a, a fairly simple technique to do, but a very hard one to master that involves focusing all of your awareness on a singular point within yourself and in that way creating a silence around you, um, a silence of your thoughts that also allows you to obtain a sense of an experience of union with um, everything around you. And this, this next verses, which will, I'm going to repeat verse 28 and then go on from there to verse 32, is in a way a continuation of the context of what is required for, what does dhyana do and what it is required for it to work. Um, so verse 28 says, Thus engaged in his eternal soul, the mystic is beyond all impurities, in bliss, constantly connected to Brahma, he obtains the greatest joy. So the important thing is here is that dhyana is, verse, is phrased in this context, which you might not see in some other places that you see this practice in other schools of Buddhism, of Hinduism or in schools of Buddhism. Um, it's phrased as a context of, dis, of connecting to your soul and through that connecting to all things. Um, connecting to, in other words, what you could call the super soul, that, that essence of everythingness that is per, that pervades all individual things. And Verse 29 says, the soul that exists in all beings is also your soul. One who has united the self by yoga will see everything with the same eyes. So it's saying your, in your experience of dhyana, when you practice it sufficiently, that you attain something within it, you will have this experience of being connected to everything in, with and that all things have just a single shared soul. He goes on to say, lines 30, 31, and 32, whoever sees me in all things and all things in me is not far from me, nor am I far from him. He who devote, is devoted to me is in that oneness that is the heart of all beings. He is entirely in that oneness. In spite of himself, the mystic remains in me. He who sees that his soul is everywhere and the same, Arjuna, whether in happiness or misery, such a man is considered a perfect mystic. So in these verses, Krishna is talking about himself. He's talking to Arjuna, who is, his, in this case, he's in the role of his disciple, you could say. And he says that the soul that's in all beings is also in your soul. So this, this is the start of this line of argument, right? The super soul exists in all of us. It is also your soul. One who is united by yoga will see everything with the same eyes. So when you have obtained the yoga of, of dhyana, of meditation, you'll be able to see that all things are connected by one common soul. And whoever sees me, that is to say Krishna, in all things and all things in me is not far from me, nor I far from him. So what he's saying is that, that his soul is the super soul, which is also your soul, which is also the super soul, which is also his soul. Um, and he who is devoted to me, that now he's talking to him as a, as a student, as a disciple, and himself as a guru. He's saying, you're, he's saying to him, essentially, your devotion, when you practice devotion towards me as the guru, is in the oneness that is in the heart of all beings. So you are so Arjuna might be practicing devotion to Krishna as the teacher. You might practice devotion to a guru that you have, and in doing so, you are at the same time engaging in the oneness that is in the heart of all beings. So you are devoted to the person, maybe, but also the person as the guru and as the guru as a representative of that oneness, which is also the oneness that is within yourself. Um, so the mystic that way becomes part of that oneness and also one with the guru. The mystic remains in me. This, is, this explains from the point of view of 
dhyana practice of, of this type of uh, meditation of concentration, the significance of devotion within the context of this practice, that you, your dhyana is not being done just to focus the mind, um, it is done not to just silence the mind either, but that after you've silenced the mind, you begin to have this experience of this oneness of all things, and then you must delve into that experience, and that can only be done through devotion. And then the last line, it says, he who sees that his soul is everywhere in the same Arjuna, whether in happiness or misery, such a man is considered a perfect mystic. So when you've reunited to your super soul, you're your own self. You're also an indivisible part of all other people and all things. Um, and in fact, everyone is already that. You're already, that's part of what Krishna is saying here. Krishna and Arjuna are the same super soul. You know, the, a person watching this and me recording this, the, we are the same super soul. Right? Everyone is already the super soul. Um, the, the majority of people don't have the experience of being the super soul, of having that union with it. The awakened person is the person who knows that he's never apart from that soul. And, never, and that other people are also never apart from that soul. And yet they are also completely able to continue being themselves, right? Because this is, this is you are one atom of a larger body. And a person who does achieve this understanding can then be authentically natural in all situations and will not be divorced from the experience of nature. This, this means that they will be perfectly themselves as the part of the bigger picture that they are meant to encompass. And I guess that's everything for today. There'll be more Bhagavad Gita videos and other videos coming soon, I hope. <laughs> I'm going to try to post more frequently than I have been. Um, and if you like this video, please uh, feel free to share it anywhere you think people will be interested in it. And if, um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Check out the different playlists. There's lots of different topics to look at. And uh, one of them is the EFA Society playlist, which if you're looking for a system of, of, of training, of instruction in spiritual cultivation. It is not connected particularly to the Gita, but um, if, that's, if you are looking for uh, a teaching that will allow you to engage in that spiritual cultivation that leads to these kinds of experiences, then feel free to get in touch. Also check out in the description below, there will be a link to a newsletter. It's not a very frequent newsletter. Um, but when it comes out, it'll send you links of uh, videos and, and uh, teachings that I've done in, since the last newsletter, so that you don't miss them. Uh, and the important thing is also when you get the video, the, uh, when you get the, uh, the newsletter, the uh, email that confirms that you received it, be sure to look in there because there will be a link to a free PDF of The Path and the Power, which is my... Uh, my a version and commentary on the, the Tao Te Ching, which is a, a good compliment to, if I mean, if you've liked the Gita videos, if you've liked my I Ching videos, um, you may want to check out the uh, Path and the Power and look at the, the interpretations and commentaries on this particular text. Um, it's also a very good compliment if you're actually, you know, using the I Ching or if you're working in the Yifa materials. So uh, be sure to check it out. It's free and it, uh, it won't cause you any hassle, we promise. <laughs> and uh, I uh, hope otherwise you'll uh, still share the video anywhere that you would like to. Thank you very much.